Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, one question that comes up quite a bit is how much of an object should you expect to see from a certain height over a certain distance on our Earth? We use a curve calculator to figure that out, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, one of my fellow YouTube creators, Baldy Cats here, did a nice video on this a little while ago. I had a look at it, and I thought maybe I'd add a couple of things to it and redo it. So here's my version of the Earth Curve Calculator. Now there are a number of really good earth curve calculators out on the internet. One of the best is by Walter Bislens, and I've got a link to that in the description. He also has an excellent calculator that allows you to customize atmospheric refraction, and we'll get into that in another video. We'll just touch on it on this one. Now I've used this earth curve calculator on quite a few of my videos in the past, but it's always a good idea to understand what happens to those numbers that you put in. In this video, we're going to learn how that calculator is set up and how to calculate it by hand if need be. Now the first step in every problem is to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and set the problem up so we know exactly what questions we are asking. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we draw ourselves in a surface of the Earth. Any round object will do, and now we've just got a nice arc on the surface of the Earth. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from the center of the Earth all the way up to our observation height, whatever that is above the surface. So that line will go a little bit past the arc there. Now we're going to do the same thing for our target. We're going to draw the radius and extend that up a little bit to represent the height of our target. Now the next step will be to draw our line of sight from our observation height tangential to the curve of the earth and over to our target. This will represent the limits of what we can see. Everything above this line will be visible to us. Everything below the line will be hidden by the curve of the earth and the line itself is called our line of sight. Now our last step will be to draw a line directly from the center of the Earth up to where that line of sight touches the curve of the Earth. Notice how that forms two right triangles. Now if we turn it on our side, we can see the right triangle, and we can solve for that triangle using what's known as the Pythagorean Theorem. Now we know two legs of this right triangle. We know what the radius of the Earth is, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is the radius of the Earth plus the observation height. So you see we're setting that up as a right triangle. Now we know that by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse squared equals the sum of both sides squared. So if we take the square of the hypotenuse which is the radius plus the observer height, subtract the square of the radius of the Earth, that will give us the square of the distance from our observer position to our horizon. So solving for these, we can see that the distance from our observation point to the horizon is 28.284 kilometers or 28,284 meters. For this problem, we used an observer elevation of 60 meters, and we used a distance to target of 120 kilometers. Having solved for our distance to the horizon from our observation point being 28.284 kilometers, we now know that from our horizon to our target, it is 91.716 kilometers. Our next step will be to solve for the second triangle. Now we know that one leg is the radius of the Earth, and one leg is the radius of the Earth plus the hidden height. We also know the distance from the horizon, 
So we've got two legs of a right triangle, and we can solve for the third. Now what I like to do is I like to draw out the object and then put in our values so that I know exactly what I'm dealing with. So we've got the triangle. This is the distance from the horizon to the object. Next we'll have the radius of the Earth, and that's that leg right there. Both of these are known distances, so I'm putting in the values. The one that we have to solve for is the hypotenuse this time, which is the distance um, that is hidden behind the horizon plus the radius of the Earth. Now we know that the square of the hypotenuse of this triangle equals the sum of the squares of the legs by the Pythagorean theorem. Plugging in our numbers, we come up with a value of the radius of the Earth plus 656 meters. Now plugging these numbers into the advanced curve calculator, we see that our horizon is 27.65 miles and our hidden height appears to be correct. The slight difference is due to the number of significant digits. This video is actually a re-upload of a video I did yesterday, but I had made a small math error in that video. And uh, since I was redoing this, I wanted to touch on something I was asked about, and that is the 8 inches per mile squared that we hear a lot as far as drop of the Earth curve. In reality, that's not that bad of an estimate, so let's go ahead and do it for this example. Now, at 28.284 kilometers out to the horizon from our observation height, that works out to be 17.57 miles. Now we square that and multiply it by 8 inches, and we come up with about 205.8 feet. Now, doing it correctly using the curve calculator without accounting for refraction, 60 meters is 196.8 feet. So we actually get a drop of 196.85 feet because at uh, 28.284 kilometers, we are literally right on the deck on the surface of the, of the Earth. So without accounting for refraction, we're about 5% off. It's not bad for a quick and easy in-your-head conversion. But now we have to look at refraction. Our atmosphere refracts sunlight downward. That's why a little bit more than one half of our Earth is in sunlight every day. It's because the sunlight kind of bends around the lip of the Earth at the horizon. Now, we have the same thing when we're looking at distant objects. We can have a little bit of bending uh, as, the, as the light from the object that we're looking at comes up to the horizon and then bends down and comes towards our eye. Now this illustration is from one of my other videos and it's not the same effect. This is actually the bending of light due to gravitational fields. However, it does kind of give us an idea of what I'm talking about with refraction. Now say we're looking out over calm, cold water on a warm day. You can understand that there would be a layer of dense cold air right down by the water, maybe five or six feet thick, with warm air on top of it. That's a temperature inversion. Now, now say that there is a building just beyond the horizon, and we're looking out at it from the aspect of the Earth there. That building is below the horizon, and we're not going to see it. However, light reflecting off of that building will come towards us to where its horizon is. It will hit that cold air and bend downward. As that light comes down over the curve of the Earth towards us, we will see it and follow that light back and have an illusion of that building higher than it actually is, much like the illusion of the star is noted here. During this entire time, what we've been using is this example. This was taken from a sand dune approximately 60 meters high and 120 kilometers from Chicago. This skyline should not be visible from that distance in Michigan. However, it was a calm, warm spring day, and the water of Lake Michigan was very cold and still. The result was a temperature inversion was set up with this still cold air just above the cold lake water with warm air on top of it. 
And what happened was light reflecting off of the Chicago skyline was bent downward, curving up around the horizon and giving the impression that Chicago was actually higher on the horizon than it actually is due to this illusion. This phenomenon is called looming. And it was so unique, it actually made the local news when this photograph came out. Let's see if we can do a little backyard experiment and reproduce this effect. Now here it is in real time. You've got a lump of green clay up there. Underneath that lump of green clay is, is red clay. He's going to put some liquid butane on that metal cylinder, creating a small temperature inversion. You see how the red pops up over the edge? That's how we see the Chicago skyline. Have a look again. Kind of cool, isn't it? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Please take a moment and like and subscribe to my channel and hit the uh, little bell for notifications. This is Bob the Science Guy. Y'all take care.